Have you been wondering how and when to introduce fish and shellfish to your baby? In this video, I'm going to talk about the safe ways to offer these potentially allergenic foods and the best age to introduce them. If this is our first time meeting, I'm Dr. Belusov. I'm a board certified pediatrician and I equip parents with knowledge so they can care for their children with confidence. Many parents worry about introducing the common allergenic foods to their baby because they fear an allergic reaction. But delaying the introduction of the allergenic foods can increase the child's risk of becoming allergic to these foods. So it's to a baby's benefit to get exposed to them early on in the food introduction process. That's why I put together this video series to show you how simple it is to introduce these foods. This is the fifth video in the series. If you'd like to check out the other videos, I have them linked at the end of this one. First, let's talk about at what age you should introduce fish and shellfish products to your baby. For many years, parents were advised to avoid exposing their child to the common food allergens in their first several years of life. However, the Inquiring About Tolerance or EAT study showed that for babies who are at higher risk for developing food allergies, feeding them the common allergy-causing foods early and often reduced the risk of developing allergies to these foods. Most babies are developmentally ready to safely start taking solids around six months of age and when they're showing all the signs of readiness to eat. First, you can start off with introducing several of the less allergenic foods. Then you can begin to introduce the common allergenic foods to your baby one at a time, even in the first week of starting solids. There's no reason to delay exposing your baby to the common allergenic foods early on in the food introduction process. Seafood will make a good addition to the baby's diet. It provides protein, omega-3 fatty acids that help with brain development, and a lot of other vitamins and minerals without the high saturated fat content found in many other animal foods. If you need some examples of a food introduction approach that will allow you to more systematically expose your baby to a variety of foods, including the common allergenic foods, then check out my video titled Example of Week 1 of Starting Baby on Solids and my video titled How to Create Balanced Meals and Expose Baby to a Variety of Foods. They're linked up here if you'd like to check them out. So how can you safely introduce fish and shellfish to your baby? Pick a good time in the morning or afternoon to introduce the new food. I don't recommend introducing the common allergenic foods close to bedtime, so you give yourself several hours of awake time to observe for a potential allergic reaction. Also, avoid introducing two new foods on the same day. In such a situation, if your child has an allergic reaction, it will be more challenging to know which one was the cause. When introducing a fish or shellfish product for the first time, out of an abundance of caution, it's recommended to spend several days giving the new allergenic food and holding off on offering any other new foods. However, on those days, it's fine to bring back foods that your baby has had previously and did well with. There are many different fish that are considered to be safe to give to a baby as long as they're fully cooked. Salmon, trout, cod, tilapia, whitefish, catfish, perch, flounder, canned light tuna, and sardines are some of the fish that are considered to be low in mercury and safe to offer. The great thing about fish is that it's soft and easy for the baby to chew even before they have any teeth. Some ideas for offering fish include mashing it with a vegetable or fruit that your baby has had previously. If you're doing baby lead weaning and offering finger foods, you can make homemade fish sticks with catfish, pollock, tilapia, or flounder. You can also offer canned sardines cut into strips about the thickness of an adult pinky finger or a little thicker. But be sure to look at the labels and go with the lower salt options for canned fish. When offering shellfish, I find that it's easiest to cook shrimp or crab and puree it with a vegetable or fruit that the baby has had previously. Or you can make homemade crab cakes or shrimp cakes and cut them into strips for the baby to self-feed. If you'll be offering shrimp, be sure to remove the shell and tail and after cooking it, slice the shrimp in half lengthwise to make it easier for the baby to chew. Now let's talk about how much and how often you should offer fish and shellfish to your child. 
When they're just starting solids, babies will only take a few bites each meal. But even when they're really taking to food, the recommended amount of seafood to offer is about one to two ounces per week. At this time, it's still unknown the exact amount of fish and shellfish that a baby would need to eat to potentially decrease their risk for developing an allergy to these foods. In the EAT study, they asked parents to offer at least 25 grams of white fish divided into at least two meals a week for a total of at least five weeks. This translates to being a little less than half an ounce two times a week. If we follow this as a guide, then you can aim to offer up to half an ounce of fish two times a week and half an ounce of a shellfish product two times a week. Children who are at higher risk for developing food allergies are those who have eczema and or were diagnosed with an egg allergy or have a family history of allergic conditions. These babies especially were shown to benefit greatly from early and frequent exposure to allergenic foods in their diet as a strategy to potentially prevent them from developing food allergies. And even if your child doesn't have any risk factors for food allergies, delayed introduction can increase the risk of becoming allergic to these foods. Therefore, there's no benefit to delaying the introduction of the allergenic foods to your baby. Be sure to continue to expose your baby to the common allergenic foods on a weekly basis, since regular exposure is key to allergy prevention. And even if you aren't able to give as much as I'm recommending, your child stands to benefit from the consistency of being exposed to these allergenic foods in their diet. If you'd like to know how an allergic reaction to a food would present itself and what to do in the event that your baby has an allergic reaction, I have a separate video that goes into detail on that. It's linked up here if you'd like to check it out. I also have videos on how to introduce all the other common allergenic foods linked up here. See you in the next video.